All right, guys, it is my pleasure to welcome you back to the TI8 China qualifiers. We got For the Dream versus Team Serenity. Oh, no, I've got this bug. Oh, interesting. I don't know why this Ten happens. Check this out. It's remaining. like, you know, my mouse cursor is duplicated. Radiant I think I have to reopen the client really quickly uh, to fix this. So I'm just going to do that uh, real fast, and we will be right back. Very strange bug. Happens very infrequently, but... There you go. What are you going to do? Uh, so we have FTD versus Team Serenity coming your way. It's still relatively early days for the China Qualifier. We're about a quarter of the way through. Uh, I think there's eight matches today and then another eight matches tomorrow running concurrently. Uh, there are two different lines. So unfortunately, can't watch everything. But oh, I've, I've, been, I've been keeping the games on both screens and, and keeping an eye on it that way. But... Uh, pretty important match for both of these two teams. I think they're both going to be in contention for a top Radiant four finish in pink. the group. So moving Dot forward, and there you go. Double, double cursor gone. Uh, microphone is still seemingly not open. I saw some other casters talking about this being an issue. I think it was broken in the recent patch. I think it'll be fine once we get uh, into the actual game. But anyway, stream's up, so... We're all good on that front. Uh, both of these two teams have been playing pretty well from what I've seen. Uh, team Serenity remaining. actually looking pretty scary. I saw Miracle earlier on Twitter. He's playing for Ten IG Vitality. He was talking Dyer about feeling team like back. Team Serenity are a team to look out for at the moment that they're back. looking pretty scary. Um, and then FTD also not doing too badly. They're one and one at the moment. Uh, they back. did end up losing to IG uh, to... Wait. IG main squad? Yeah, so they lost to the IG main squad. Uh, they did beat Young Dumb. Young Dumb now currently to 0-2 record, so I, it's looking like they're probably going to end up landing in the bottom. Um, but in terms of these two teams, Team Serenity, they were number one in the first open qualifier alongside Keen Gaming, who I think a lot Ten of people are looking at remaining. as one of the favorites for this group and for this qualifier uh, overall. remaining. And then for FTD, they came first in the second open qualifier. Uh, they played in the first open qualifier, and they Radiant actually team lost back. to CDEC in the round of 16 uh, in the, the, first, uh, the first open qualifier. So that was the best of one. They hadn't quite made it to the best of threes just yet at that point. Uh, so I would say going into this, Team Serenity probably the favorites overall. Um, Team Serenity as well, they've got some interesting heroes up their sleeve. The draft has already gotten away from me a little bit, so we'll just run through that quickly. Windranger's been super remaining. popular recently. We've seen Marana's stock rising quite a bit, though Five mostly with setup. Remaining. I think a lot of Marana's popularity has been due to the fact that Bane and Naga are both very, very strong in this sort of dual lane focused meta. Got the ET being banned out. That's a hero that Team Serenity were running all the way through their open qualifier run. Wisp, must ban in a lot of people's minds. Beastmaster, very popular. Naga, just talking about. Phantom Lancer is interesting. That's a hero that I want to talk about a little bit more because I feel like in a lot of... You know, this is I'm going to talk about my pubs here, but it feels like in a lot of pubs that I play, it feels like Phantom Lancer just Radio feels completely impossible to deal with, completely takes over the game. Super annoying. And then I went and looked up his professional win rate. Uh, and I think at the Super Major, he was played something like 25 times and only had like a 30-something percent win rate. Uh, but so far in the China qualifiers, I think he's actually been looking pretty good. I've seen three or four Phantom Lancer games, and I want to say that he's won pretty much every single one so far. Even one where he, seconds, Phantom Lancer remaining. got completely dumped on in the lane uh, and then still managed to come back. And for anyone who was annoyed about the... The top section of the draft screen freezing. We just had to wait for one more pick for that to get unfrozen. But not too surprised to see the PL being banned. Lesh has been very popular so far. People have been running him support. People have been running him core. Seems like Lesh is really trending. Night Stalker is apparently still not completely dead, which I am honestly surprised at. This here has been nerfed so much. Uh, but everybody still seems to be picking him pretty heavily, so... I think just getting that little bit of early momentum going, which is what the Night Stalker does for you, is something that a lot of teams are really value, uh, valuing right now. And all right, Witch Doctor, pretty good against the Chen, pretty good laning support. Have been seeing a decent amount of him. Witch Doctor and Dazzle, uh, also a hero seconds, that seems remaining. to be coming back into the meta a little bit somewhat. Uh, FTD Five looking like they are remaining. probably running Lesh as a core. It's not 100% clear just yet. That's the other nice thing about this hero. 
They could have Sand King Lesh as a dual lane, and then in that case, either one of them could be farming. Um, they could have the Leshrac running mid, so then it would be a Sand King Chen sort of a dual lane. They've, they've got options here, and I like the Lycan pick. Pretty good against Lifestealer. You don't really have to, you know, you're not worried about open wounds or anything like that. Um, and also a hero that doesn't really need a ton of help in lane. And when you've got heroes like Lesh and you've got heroes like Chen, you don't Ten necessarily want to be sitting there babysitting your position one. You'd much prefer to have somebody who you can give a little Five bit of a start to, remaining. come and gank for occasionally, but outside of that, you just want to leave him to, to do his thing, and that definitely fits the bill here with the Lycan pickup. So that seems pretty good. Very pushy, very aggressive so far. They got the Edict, they got Chen Creeps, they got Lycan summons. So plenty of push, not a lot of de-push for Team Serenity just yet. So that's something that they're going to have to look towards. Uh, the solid lockdown against the Lycan also feeling a little bit lacking. Not clear just yet whether or not this Night Stalker is going to be position 4, uh, or if they're going to be trying to run it elsewhere. Could be a decent game to pick up something like an Underlord. Gives them a little bit of Radiant lockdown that they're missing, and also they don't really have, again, oh, don't have a ton of deep push, so the Firestorm would come in pretty handy uh, in that sense. But it does seem like Team Serenity, okay, just go for the Queen of Pain. Not 100% clear whether that's going to be mid lane or off lane at the moment. I think we did see an off lane Queen of Pain a little bit earlier, though I'm not sure if that was from them. Let's have a look here. I think it, I think it may have actually been off lane. Yeah, so they picked an off lane co-op uh, against remaining. IG a little bit earlier and actually did end up winning Five that match. Seconds remaining. So, did a pretty good job. Um, it was a, it was a little bit of a weird draft from IG. They picked the Tide, didn't really end up doing that much. Serenity had a Silencer, which is not a hero that we've been seeing a lot of, but it does seem like Team Serenity uh, do really like it. So that's pretty sweet. Interesting to see that hero getting picked. Uh, how many times have they picked it actually? So they picked it in the opens against Sun Gaming, and then they picked it just earlier against. IG. They also picked some Necrophos, which I'm completely shocked at. They picked it against CDEC, and they won that match. So I, I don't know quite how that worked out, but they do seem to like some of these slightly less conventional, maybe slightly more aggressive uh, offlane heroes. And Queen of Pain kind of fits that bill, and looks like, again, it is going to be your offlane Queen of Pain here as they pick up what looks like the Dragon Knight for mid lane. They could also still swap Templar it up. They could put the Dragon Knight in the off lane. They could choose to put the Queen of Pain mid against the TA potentially, but now it is going to be Jin Q playing it. So it looks like off lane co-op. Uh, Love You Love Me had a great TA performance a little bit earlier in the day. That was the match that FTD won. I think they completely stomped that game as well. Uh, let's have a look here. Yeah, so they picked it against Young Dumb. The TA had like 20k net worth in 20 minutes or something. It was it was completely ridiculous. The net worth lead got huge. Young Dumb still had some high ground defense that they could fall back on a little bit, but yeah, they were they were not winning that game. So, all right, I like this. It gives them some Roshan potential. Uh, they are pretty heavily in like the physical damage camp as far as their damage distribution. Why is why is my mic not working here? That's Let's uh, let's try and toggle this. Prepare for battle. Open mic. Nope. Is it, is it the threshold? No, it just says it's muted. Hmm. <laughs> that's party. Uh, nope, that's party as well. Hmm. I don't actually know. Seems like something has been bugged out. Uh, so apologies to anybody trying to listen on Dota TV. I will do some investigating in between games. I'm sure one of the other casters has run into this and has figured out a solution. But for now, just have to stick with the stream and go from there. So uh, looks like it is going to be what a support lesh and a farming sand king. A little bit of dual roam action potentially. Both Raji and the lesh actually have orb venom picked up. We'll see if they'll be playing together all that much. We got Lifestealer, Wish Doctor is the dual lane being set up. And it looks like Serenity are trying to kind of dodge a little bit away from the the aggro dual lane that FTD are going to be running, or in this case, maybe even the aggro tri lane. It's a full rotation. The Lycan's now at top. 
They're sending the Sand King bot. This is a little bit interesting because I think a lot of teams actually quite like having the Lifestealer up against the Sand King um, in lane. Or at least it's a tolerable lane for the Lifestealer, whereas for most melee heroes it's just completely unplayable. So uh, we'll see if this prompts any further swaps. Mid lane is going to be Dragon Knight up against TA. TA gets a slightly better block, but unfortunately overblocks it a little bit. So we're just going to be bouncing back and forth here. We'll see how many CS we can get into the tower. Yeah, two, two out of four. We'll make it three out of four. Does manage to grab it. All right, nicely done. And get some free hits on the Dragonite here. DK's got one so far. Let's see how much he gets out of this wave. He is taking so much damage for this. Oh, lordy. And TA already having level two. Able to pop up that refraction. Start getting some denies. And the courier gets killed. Oh, no, the side blades. Oh, ZYD. He didn't even get the salve delivered. That could just be laying over. I was just talking about Love You Love Me taking over the game completely uh, earlier for FTD, and that could very well happen again here. He's going to get tons of farm, should be able to bully the DK pretty nicely. Fortunately, it is a Dragon Knight, so you know, we'll probably see a few points in the Dragon's Blood, and he'll still be able to mostly cope with this lane, but losing that Courier this early has to sting. So, SK doing pretty well so far. 6 CS. Lifestealer only has the two to his name, now the burst strike coming through. No rage skilled up just yet, he does now have the level two, so... Has it in reserve if he really needs it, but... Not enough damage to bring him down. Chen up top, has he grabbed a creep or anything yet? Let's see what he's got. Got the oh-so-controversial Wildwing Ripper over here, but, you know, he's been, he's been fixed. Uh, mid lane... Yeah, as you can see, Dragonite's still... Doing okay, I don't even think we really need to watch this lane all that much. Shouldn't really be any... Solo kill potential one way or the other. Uh, the lane does get a little bit easier for Dragonite once he gets level 6. Can just pop that up and start dealing with the refraction charges. But I think they're both going to farm. A lot of this is going to come down to whether or not the TA finds time to go and stack some neutrals or something like that. Uh, Lycan also struggling a little bit in terms of farm. I think he should be able to sustain reasonably down bottom. They're actually going to be going on the Witch Doctor this time around. But Life Stealer will be able to scare them away. And just a lot of harassment being traded. We have started to see this heal build uh, become a little bit more popular once again for the Witch Doctor after Maledict is being oh, nerfed into the ground. And yeah, just a little bit more harassment getting thrown all over the place. Raji, what's he got actually? Okay, so he does just go and grab the Wildwing. Uh, no Harpy in the small camp. That could have been a game changer up here. But this lane is getting pushed pretty heavily. And Q doing reasonably well in terms of farm. This is a fairly easy Queen of Pain game. There's not a ton of hard lockdown for you, so it should be able to split push the side lanes pretty heavily and get quite a lot of items up off of that. It's quite a good Orchid game, which I think is something else that you want to look for when you're playing a co-op. And he does have some heroes that he can move with this game, which is always really helpful. He can run around, uh, potentially finding kills with the Night Stalker or something along those lines. Ooh, Shinkyu taking a ton of damage though, just getting beat down. Does have that salve. He's gonna be okay. Night Stalker's got nothing left in reserve and Shrine still locked down for a minute and a half. Uh, in terms of, I don't even know who I necessarily favor overall this game. The pace of game is really scary from FTD, but I feel as though if uh, Serenity can withstand that, they've got the full Tricor. And I think I like their Tricor a little bit more scaling into the late game compared to what FTD are bringing to the table. So, it's a lot of it is going to come down to the TA start, how quickly they get that first Roshan, Desolator coming online, Sand King Blink, how much of an impact that has. Alright, let's go. Can we keep on going here? Stun's gonna end up whiffing. Well, nice rage dodge from GGG. They are going on to beyond, but not nearly enough damage to bring him down. Just a little bit too tanky. So, just a bit more of a trade. And they actually do want to turn this around onto the Witch Doctor. Stun following it up. Two points up in the lightning. One more auto attack's gonna do it. He pops. Uh, Life still does still have. He's got 10 stick charges, so he's not scared at all. Slaps him back, but he also can't find a kill. So, there you go. First blood. Definitely nice, thinking, thinking about a bottle, but what's he actually going to do here? Is he going to go grab the bottle, then grab bounties? Doesn't even have to use the shrine, that'd be really nice. James ooh, may have lingered here a little bit too long, though. He'll get a free trip back to the pit. <laughs> One more auto attack from the life to bring him down. I don't know if he was calling plays for his team or what the deal was there, but 
That was really fun. Nice. All right, bounty number one. I'll take your tribute. Ah, overlay. Whoops. You are right. It's gonna be five minutes. Uh, where is it? Which one? There you go. Thank you. Taking, taking damage, in some trouble, can they actually finish him off? Void coming off cooldown in two seconds, time, trying to stay above the trees, alright, he's down. Raji, <laughs> nothing that he can really do here. Chen only really being played as a laning hero in this situation, which I think is a little bit of a concern. Especially since it seems like they're not really winning this lane. If anything, it's just a trade. Uh, and he's not really getting a ton of farm. So not all that easy for him to go and rotate over to mid and find a gank there. They are going to be going under the Witch Doctor once again. Could just be a support trade. Lifestealer looking towards James. XCJ just stands his ground. He's healing up a little bit. Will be brought down. And does just end up being that one for one down here. Up at top. PYW getting pushed back a bit, but he's going to be okay. Love you, love me. What is his advantage on this mid lane? Pretty significant. 44 and 16 against the 28 and 2 of the Dragon Knight. Did he just clear some ancients? Looks like he may have made his way over there. Like I said, now that the DK gets 6, life gets a little bit easier, but he's still not looking all that healthy. And actually, bottom lane, they will manage to bring down the life stealer. Chain stunning him, and now they've got a follow up stun. This is trouble, and they will end up losing the Witch Doctor too. James finding himself a double kill. Oh, man. Alright, I thought this bottom lane was going well, but that is some very big kills for FTD. They're already up 2k gold. And this is very concerning if you're Team Serenity. That, I think this is the only thing that they can't deal with, is if the early game just gets completely out of control, the Night Stalker doesn't find anything successful. They see him down here now at bottom, so they know that Serenity are trying to make some kind of a play. And the pings come out at top. I think FTD might like to go and do something over there. Love You Love Me has the Blink Dagger queued up as his first selection. So maybe feels like his team has enough damage, has enough uh, building damage, just wants to have that follow up with the SK down bottom. They get some chain stun coming through. That is big trouble. The co-op does just barely manage to blink herself away. But this isn't what they wanted to have happen. They brought the Night Stalker down here because they wanted to use the level 6 on the co-op to find some kills. And now Night Stalker, no well not Night Stalker, Lifestealer is he bit off a little bit more than he can chew. Looks like he should be okay beyond the burst strike in three seconds time, but he's just going to go right back to farming. Regeneration. Alright. So Tia just going to keep on farming up these Ancients, like in very standard build from him so far. He's just going to be going straight towards the Dominator. Oh. Life stealer, trouble. Stuck on the agi treads. Taking some extra damage. Gonna try and turn this one around, but he has already used the open wounds. Paralyzing cast not really helping too much. It does end up catching the troll creep. Sand King wants the burst strike through the trees, but he's also pretty low. XCJ uh, retreats back with the heal, but I don't think that's gonna be enough. And over at mid lane, that is a straight up solo kill. Love you, love me. Just gets his UID completely trapped in the river, and down he goes. Nothing surprising about that. I, don't know. I mean, it's a slightly surprising kill, but uh, nothing complicated about that kill at all. And that is going to be a very fast blink dagger for this TA. Oh my word. And a TP over to the shrine, grab himself a clarity, and he is going to be AR care. This, yeah, this is very worrying. They've got another night time coming up in three minutes, by, but by that point, the Sand King's going to have blink, the TA is going to have blink, the Lycan's going to have dominator. And the FTD lineup is going to be pretty much ready to rock and roll. And they, they haven't done anything with this Sonic Wave just yet. You know, Queen of Pain, you farm reasonably well. You, you know, you are a hero that can kind of uh, split push out lanes a little bit, but not with this build. He's actually gone for the maxed out Shadow Strike. He does get it over under the Lycan here. Wolves body blocking things out a little bit. And I don't even know if he needs too much TP help. Okay, there's going to be a TP coming in from the left track. James looking for the turnaround, gets the slowdown. Now the stun onto Jin Q. The burst is huge. He almost gets the Sonic Wave off. But I think even if he'd managed to, it only would have been the Leshrac kill. And now James just gets 
a straight up double. Raji in a great position there. Beyond also going for the solo kill onto XCJ. He gets it. He wants that bounty rune. GCG is not going to let him have it. Beyond, is he actually okay? Yeah, Bar strikes down onto the low ground. I think he might get out of this. Open wound still on cooldown for a little bit. It's going to take one more auto attack for his trouble on the way out, but got himself a bounty rune waiting, and that is now his blink. I'll take your tribute. Oh man, this this early game is just going from bad to worse. This next nighttime is going to have to do a lot for them. If they can get a couple of successful pickoffs, they can take buildings. That, that is the one nice thing that Serenity do have going for them, especially with this uh, last pick, Dragonite. But, oh my god, Sonic waving to kill the wave. Oh no, that is... That feels so bad at this stage of the game. Okay, they're gonna go for a smoke. Nighttime in a minute down bottom. Jin Q getting chain stunned, getting netted down. Four FTD heroes converging. That is the reveal of the Blink Dagger on the Sand King. They're thinking about the backstab here, but I don't think this is a fight that they can take. They're going to come running forward. XJC does have the death wood ready to go. If they can get a good channel, that would be huge, but the two-man bow strike. Now with the follow-up stun from James, also finding two. The life stealer will be able to run forward. He brings down the last XJC, barely surviving, but does get finished off by this Hatter Tormentor. Looks like they will be able to grab the Chen creeps as well, but they lose the tier one tower. It's just a one-for-one one trade over at mid lane. The TA is already chopping wood on this mid tier one. One mythical hammer away from picking up a desolator. Love you, love me is so far ahead this game, and they do kind of have the tools to deal with him. The refraction is not insanely strong this game necessarily, but this is just such a scary position to be in, especially if you're this life stealer. Ishiji trying to come in and grab a kill here, but he's going to get chain stunned into oblivion. No rage. No infest, no nothing. ZYD also trying to run for it, but they've got so much catch, they've got so much chase, they've got another burst strike in one second, and there isn't even a tier 1 tower here. PYW, what can he do to save? They're gonna try for the turnaround, but it's another two-man burst strike. XCJ over the tree line, doing some work with the death ward, but doesn't keep it focused on the James, finally gets the kill now. But ZYD is dead. Jin Q doesn't have his ultimate available for another 30 seconds, and this is just getting obscene. Parental advisory required. This is just... I don't know what they do. They're down by 7k. The Lycan isn't even really getting involved. He's just off farming his Necrobook. They lost the top tier 1. In the meantime, their map control is getting completely strangled. And FTD just using every little bit of advantage that they've gained out of the laning stage so effectively. Smoke. Is it going to get broken? They know that the Dragonite is up here on the high ground. Nice side trap placement. They know that someone is going to come and try and find uh, find farm over here in the tri camp area. He does get the shrine off. It looks like FTD. They're going to call it quits. It is still nighttime. No reason to give away any free kills. They claim another tier 1 tower. Like in. Uh, pretty much unstoppable. Jin Q is just working on an Aghanim Scepter. But without the Scream of Pain, he can't really push lanes this game. And I thought that was part of the point of the Queen of Pain this game, was to be able to push out the lanes for the team. Night Stalker is just gone. Shows his face for a second on the mid lane. Quick burrow strike from beyond, and Lycan's not done. He sees this Witch Doctor, and he wants him. Paralyzing Cask is going to be a little bit annoying. The Center Conqueror does get stunned up, but the Lycan's still speedy. And he doesn't even need his creeps to help out. Beyond's thinking about like, oh, do I need to come in here and burst strike? No. Finds the burst strike. Can they get the follow-up? Centaur Conqueror stun. They can as well. Shin Q pretty low. Drops off the Sonic Wave. That health talent not there just yet for the Sand King. He'll be brought down. Ooh, love you, love me. Coming in. Doesn't have the Desert just yet. It hasn't been delivered, but the Meld minus armor is still doing work. Onto the Dragonite. ZYD. Can they save him? TP out from the... Wait. TP out from the Chen. Lesh still running forward. Lycan way too beefy. He's not really concerned. Love you, love me. Still jumping forward. Lifestealer, no rage, no infest, but looks like move speed is going to be just enough to get him out of there. Nightstalker wants to find a catch. He wants to keep them here. He wants to find a few more kills, but they are not going to get anything out of that. I mean, they did get the Sand King, but still, overall, really good fight for FTD. And TA just jumps forward and two shots the Nightstalker. Oh, lordy. Oh, Lord.
lordy. Alright. So now into the pit they go. They've got total map control. They got wards here. Oh my god, look at this ward. It's getting missed by... It doesn't even give that much vision. This is one of those obscure wards where it's like, oh... It doesn't actually, it's not the optimal ward in terms of the amount of vision that it provides, but it's the optimal ward in terms of it's not getting dewarded. This sentry missed, this sentry missed, and they still have vision, they know exactly who whoever is farming these two camps, and this is pretty much the only place that Team Serenity can feel safe farming at this point, and that's being taken away from them by this great ward, so. Rush on down. Aegis on the TA. I said that they did have ways to deal with the refraction this game, but they don't have ways to deal with TA twice and FTD. I don't even need- I don't even think they need to stop grouping up for the rest of this game. They can just keep on going. There is absolutely no way for Serenity to take a fight at this point. Anybody that they try and focus can just be sent back by the Chen. They've got the Hand of God for save. Lycan's beefy. Templar Assassin's got the Aegis. Sanking's gonna go jumping in. They get the first check out of the Queen of Pain. Do they have the chain stun? Jin Q. There's a stun. He's gone. So much of the burst damage from the Serenity side, now removed. They could send the TA back to heal her up, and then she could just TP to the mid tier 1, but they don't even need to. They get the net now onto the Dragon Knight, charging forward. TA getting locked down a little bit, but now saved by the Hand of God. Melee Barracks next on the chopping block. This is 16 minutes into this game, and we have a 14k net worth lead in favor of the Radiant. We were a little bit behind on the schedule before this game started. And I said that I thought Serenity were the favorites, but FTD proving me wrong, and they are going to get us right back on track with what looks like an obscenely fast win. Yeah, and they're not even done. Look, they're just like, ah, oh, we still got the Aegis, we still got everything. Why would we back? Keep on going. Tier 2 tower next. We got the Dominator regen working for the Templar Assassin. Raji's taking siege creeps. All right, Shrine's next in the chopping block. Serenity, you're just like, what the hell do we do? ZYD's trying to build a Halford. <laughs> I mean, not not a bad item against the Templar Assassin. I'm, I, I kind of wish he'd just gone for a blink, perhaps. I feel like they have to just blow somebody up. Like, build an infest bomb and then just hopefully get in there. Ho hope that you can hold until the Aegis is just about to expire and then you blink initiate a fight right as the Aegis disappears. Lifestealer pops out, you burst one target, hopefully you can go from there. They're going for a smoke right now, but I don't know, this is dangerous. They scan the high ground, they're a little bit worried about running up here blind. They don't want to fight right on top of the shrine, and in fact, FTD are actually smoked themselves. Running over towards top where they want to rendezvous with the Lycan. Jin-Q is showing, they're just gonna make a beeline over towards him, they also see the Dragonite over at mid, Courier almost gets picked off, Night Stalker popping the Hunter in the night for that, alright, a little bit of damage on the Lycan, but he has backup in spades, and yeah, Jin-Q is gonna have to jump himself out. Dyer's top shrine is under attack. Alright. Well, I don't know what happens from this point. Aegis is still up for, what, a minute and 50 seconds? So they have to try and delay until that happens. Uh, I suppose they can always infest bomb with the Clop, but that's not nearly as reliable as a Blink Stun from the Dragon Knight. And that tier 2's dead. It's long dead. Love You Love Me could even just jump right up onto the high ground if you wanted to. Go in deep. Line things up with the Sand King. There you go. Okay, Burst Strike. Not going to find anything. Halberd and the Silence both already used. Oh, and now Trouble. The Lifestealer caught outside of Rage. We'll be able to get into it now. XCJ on the back lines. Does manage to turn around with the Death Ward. Love you, love me. About to lose his first life. Gets the Refraction back up. Turns now. Three man stun out of James. He can't be stopped. And they follow it up with the Burst Strike. Epicenter. Perfect from beyond. So much damage. A triple kill. For the Lycan, two buyback coming through, but it's just way too little, way too late. Night Stalker's next. Lifestealer about to go down. Great Sonic Wave, but that's all the damage that they've got. And Love You Love Me just keeps on running forward. The GG's already been called, and FTD. Only 101 so far, but definitely looking to claim that top four spot here in the TI8 China Qualifier group stages. I think the draft may have been as long as the actual game was here. And I've, I've been sitting around 
The scheduled start time for this match was like an hour and 20 minutes ago, but all the matches are just being played back to back, but... For the dream, there you go. They were the, you know, they're the winners of the second open qualifier. They didn't make it through in the first open qualifier the way that Team Serenity did. That was part of the reason that I was like, oh yeah, I think, you know, Team Serenity may be a little bit favored here. If FTD were that good, they would have uh, made it through in the first open, but yeah. They looked amazing in that game. Uh, I don't even know if the Templar Assassin was really the, the MVP. Love you, love me. Sure, he got that courier kill. He did really well in his lane, but James with some of those split earths was ridiculous. That three-man split earth in the final fight, even though the game was pretty much already over, I feel like he did so much work on this last track. And it was such an early pick for them in the draft as well. So that is going to wrap it up for this game. Uh, the other match is probably going on uh, right this uh, right at this moment as well. Uh, so make sure you check that out. I think CIS and stuff has also started. So tons of uh, closed qualifier action coming your way for TI8. The next match on this stream is going to be Young Dumb, which is Ferrari Stack versus LFY. Uh, so I'll catch you guys in a little bit for that. I would imagine that the lobby is probably already up. So I will join that. Let's see, uh, LFY versus Young Dumb. There you go. Make sure I don't show the password. And we are in. All right, guys, so we're going to throw it to a break. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you back here for LFY versus Young Dumb in just a few minutes.